Hi, this is Ken at the KS Brakes Garage again. We've got the C8 Z06 on the lift to do a brake, uh, brake job on this car. And uh, the customer has done about 15 or 18 track sessions with the OEM brakes. And we just took the pads out. As you can see, they are pretty much down to metal to metal. So it was definitely time to get something happening here. Uh, just a couple of notes. Obviously, these. OEM pads are pretty dusty, especially on track, or use them that hard. And consistent with the other car we did at VIR last week, uh, it's a fair amount of smearing of the brake pad on the disc surface. I don't think it was feeling any judder yet, but uh, that was probably the next thing to happen. It's not ultimately idea, it's just an indication that, as you would expect, the street pad is struggling to, or the street pad compound is struggling to keep up with the use that it's getting. And one last note, when you are about to do this, make sure you have a drill handy. We had two of these get stuck already with the drill now. It's kind of a pain to get that little set screw out of there. So we'll go ahead and uh, have a look at the rear. Here in the car, uh, the interesting, very brand new pad shape from Brembo. I have not seen this before. Uh, but uh, anyway, in this case, the pads, similar, again, consistent with the car at VIR. They're down to about 30% of life when the fronts are worn down. And the thing that did actually happen consistently in both cars is, you know, the rotor's fine. It didn't smear like the front rotor, but a little bit of light grooving. So I'm not really sure what that's all about. It's not anything to really worry about. The rotors are pretty much fine. But in this case, uh, this user's lucky. He's going to get a brand new set of GeroDisc pads and rotors. It'll be the first set installed. We did the test fit for GeroDisc because we need to get these... Uh, these parts ready for the users. Now we have the front rotors here on the bench. Obviously these are the OEM ones and these are the Gyrodisc. Clearly you can see the hardware design is different. Uh, anyway, as we talked about before, you can see that the OEM pads smeared pretty good on the disc. And then you can even see the actual pad material. So that pad was definitely, uh, you know, past what it was wanting to do. So we'll compare the two discs. They're, of course they fit in the same spot, so they're very similar. We did weigh, turns out the Jiridis rotor is about a pound lighter. Probably the most important thing is, if you see the vein design, you see a little bit slightly wider air gap in the Jiridis rotor and a denser curved vein pattern as opposed to the OEM Brembo pillar vein design. So that's the difference there. And this is the curve, curve vein discs are typically what racing rotors, how they're constructed. Uh, so there's that and is of course made in USA So now we'll have a look at the rear discs So the rear disc didn't get the pad smear, but while it's not terrible it definitely was a little grooving occurring and by the way, that's not a disc issue. That's an overheated brake pad issue. Uh, so that was happening back there. And then we have an interesting OEM design. It's a little hard to tell. Now they are angled veins. They're straight, but they're angled, which is kind of a cross between a curved vein and a uh, straight vein. But the interesting thing is Curving rotors indicate that you would have a left and a right, but as GM is prone to do, they basically made these that these rotors would be most properly put on if they're angled that way. That would be a that would be a right rear rotor, and they make almost two rights. But again, I don't know what they're thinking there. But again, with your disc, it's a 72 curve vane disc, uh, and again, it turned out to be roughly one pound lighter than the OEM disc. So. Uh, not that that's necessarily a place to save weight, but uh, you know these are these are a known efficient design that should work well. All right, so we've got the brake pads on the bench. We want to see? Not sure what GM was doing with this extra stuff on there. Maybe to help you pull the pad out. I don't know. It's not required. The pin goes through the lower hole. Uh, we don't have a squealer on the race pad. We do have a little bit of a relief for sensor, but no actual sensor notch. Uh, and then you can see in a race pad, we do full coverage. We don't have any chamfer or anything. I'm not sure if the front pad had chamfers, because if they did, they're all gone now. But uh, again, we don't need a sensor notch on the race pad, and we do full material. We do put the 
slots in there to help with some noise, I guess, but it's a race pad, so we don't really care too much about much of that. Uh, so we'll uh, get these put in and uh, bedded in, and we'll be on track at Dave's ALS race at Road Atlanta uh, towards the end of the month. All right, so we're all finished here for the day. We bled, flushed and bled the brakes with SRF. New Jira disc brake pads, GP40s, available at canesbrakes.com. New Jira disc brake rotors. I'd say they're about four weeks out to production, give or take. Also, looks good, everything's installed. It's a CD. Thank you, Marco. Uh, we can't let it out the shop without a test drive, so thank you very much for that. And uh, now is the moment of truth. We're going to the pedals firm, everything's back together. All together, we're going to reconnect the battery and hope for a clean IP, no check engine light or any of that kind of stuff. So let's go ahead.